Hello, good evening, and welcome to another edition of Masters and Liberty. We bring you this program with lots of love. Here on Health Matters, we bring you lots of doctors who come in and they answer commonly asked questions about certain ailments. So today, our topic for today is going to be all signs. It's going to be taken by our doctor, Dr. Gideon Chubi. Welcome, doctor. It's very good to have you on the show. Thank you very much. So, like I said, our, our topic for today is ulcer. So, what would you say is ulcer with emphasis on stomach ulcer? Yes, ulcer is a very common disorder that affects <laughs> lots of people. Okay. It creates a huge burden on the society. Yes. And so, it's a very good topic for consideration today. Ulcer simply means wound. With regards to our subject of discussion this evening, so we're looking at stomach ulcer. Okay, yeah. So this is wound of the stomach or? Yes, yes. Okay. It's a simple way of putting it. Okay, so what would you say are the common causes of stomach ulcer? There are many causes of ulcer. Okay, let's hear them. And we know that there are certain factors that once a person is predisposed to it tends to develop ulcer so easily. Okay. Some of this Other causes that are known to be of significant concern mm. are certain drugs. A number of drugs that are used as pain relievers. Uh, people commonly use pain relievers uh, and oftentimes these drugs are abused. Okay. They are used sometimes in combination. So once um, these drugs are Some of them have significant effects in the uh, in the in the stomach, and mm. so they give rise to development of ulcer. The combination of these two factors, by far, contributes to majority of the cases of ulcer we find. Over ninety percent, uh, as a result of uh, the combination of these drugs, together mm. with the existence of uh, this infection I've mentioned about in the stomach okay but there are other causes uh, when, when one um, is there are certain stressful conditions that can give rise to ulcer uh, when one is a victim of an accident for a long time mm -hmm. uh, because stress can change the environment of the body in there so this can give rise to ulcer certain conditions too like bones Victims of bonds can easily develop ulcer, mm -hmm. all because of stress. Oh, okay. Then certain lifestyle uh, are also known to give rise to ulcer. The ingestion of alcohol, mm -hmm. especially, has been attributed to the development of Double ulcer. ulcer. Uh, even though controversially, some 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 authorities also believe that the use of cigarettes to a certain extent can also give rise to ulcer. So of major concern, these are very common ones uh, in our setting. Okay, so we've heard of a couple of things as well, like in addition to this, what you've said. So for clarity's sake, what of um, not eating? Because I personally I've heard of, okay, if you don't eat, you'll come down with ulcer. Is How true is this? Well, uh, I'm aware of this perception in the society. Mm -hmm. But um, thank God for an opportunity like this, so our viewers can know for sure 
the, the factors that can mm -hmm. give rise to ulcer. Like I've mentioned these factors above. It's not everybody that, for example, has um, that it's not everybody, for example, that has the infection mm -hmm. that comes down with ulcer. And it's not everybody that use, use um, pain relievers yes. that come down with ulcer. Mm -hmm. There are other factors that have to be put into consideration. Mm. So hunger is not known to be a cause of, of hunger. Ulcer. However, when one has the risk factors for development of ulcer, hunger can aggravate oh, okay. the, the feeling that comes with ulcer. So the symptom is oftentimes aggravated when there is hunger, but not that hunger is a cause of ulcer. Okay, so speaking of symptoms, what are the symptoms of ulcer? Ulcer is one condition that um, manifests in many ways. <laughs> okay. It's not just one thing that makes yes makes make it, makes one conclude that this is this is also yes so the feelings can be variable it can be specific it can be non-specific mm. it can range from simple headache it can range from body weakness it can range from feeling of vomiting that's mm. nausea it can be vomiting itself mm -hmm. you know then it can be uh, it can be vomiting with blood you know, it can be most commonly mm. feeling of pain in the chest or the upper part of the uh, abdomen so that feeling characterizes the majority of the uh, symptoms that uh, have been documented of ulcer okay so um how is it diagnosed? How do doctors diagnose it? How is it diagnosed? The diagnosis of ulcer, we have it in two, in two uh, categories. Mm -hmm. One, diagnosis from the symptom, like the feelings I've just mentioned now. Mm. So when we, when, when someone comes to us with these feelings, it makes us suspect that it could be ulcer. But we can go further to confirm the diagnosis. To confirm the diagnosis, we 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 use um, it. We call it upper GI endoscopy. Mm. The test of choice that we use to diagnose ulcer. ulcer. So when we do this test, it helps us a lot. It helps us see the exact location of the ulcer. Mm. It helps us characterize the ulcer mm -hmm. because uh, we'll talk about the importance subsequently I'm sure but uh, the, the overall importance of this test is to also help with setting up uh, intervention uh, modalities okay so um, how is it treated ulcer is a condition that can be cured is it oh thank God for that Yes, we, we, we cure ulcer with uh, the use of appropriate drugs. Yes, of course. But it's also very important to note that uh, once there's ulcer, it's very important for, for an expert to manage it. This improves the chances of the healing yes. and the cure. This also prevents the possibility of coming down with complications of the ulcer. That is why it's important. When one feels the above mentioned symptoms, mm -hmm. he should quickly go to the hospital. The doctor will examine him. The doctor will be able to uh, come up with a um, management protocol that will help not only to treat, but to also yes. prevent complications from oh. setting in. Okay, so what foods would you say should be eaten and be avoided by those who have ulcer? This question now, because we have heard, the same way I've said, um, asked if hunger has anything to do with ulcer. We have heard like a million and one things people with ulcer should not 
eat so i'm asking you professionally to tell me tell us rather are there foods that should be that should be eaten and those that should be avoided by people who have ulcer this is this is what i keep hearing every day the patients i see will come to the hospital you tell me that they have not been eating fried fried yam they've not been eating anything oily mm -hmm. you know these see all sorts of things wow you know the good thing about science is evidence yes so we don't discourage people from eating food the reason is this everybody has his own allergies so have also mm -hmm. they know the foods that once they eat it makes them feel worse okay so it differs for everyone yes everybody that has also knows the food that once they eat it makes them feel worse mm -hmm. that's what we encourage people to do your liberty to eat what to eat our aim is to control the ulcer so yes. that i don't feel it in the first so just know what doesn't work for you yes so when it comes to food, we don't have any protocol that beats consumption of any food okay so oranges you can take oranges you can take, you can take pepper at least minimal as yes pepper, pepper is not known to cause Awesome. Well, we have, I have heard personally, I, I can't speak for everyone, but I have heard personally about also, I can't take pepper, I have also, I can't take oranges. That's, that's what we keep hearing, but it's not, uh, that's not what we do. Okay, so it's good to know that. We, we discourage that. See, once, once you, once you, mm -hmm. and we are able to, we're able to get you to control the ulcer. Mm-hmm. You know, you you feel okay. You can you yes. can consume these foods with with minimal or no feelings of such aggravations at all. Mm. The relevance of coming to the hospital. Yes. So, uh, we don't tell people not food. We tell them control these things. Come come for regular checkups. If you have ulcer, come to the hospital. Let the doctor see you. Let the doctor establish your status that's very significant because uh, once someone begins to have recurrent especially when frequent mm -hmm. uh, exacerbation that tells you that the control is not good so it's important people come to the hospital and they are being checked by doctors they stand less risk having to avoid foods yes okay so are there home remedies for ulcer that's home remedy someone who has an ulcer patient can take before he or she is able to get professional help of course yes uh uh that i i want i like to say uh, the one, one of the drugs of course we use is antacids mm -hmm. so uh, maybe these are the home remedies for people with ulcer we we give them the box and then the they have that is like immediate so first aid yes so anytime there's uh they have such crisis they're able to take it before they come to us in the hospital it may relieve them of the symptoms but some it may not and they have to come so that we do further intervention okay so this you said is still medical Yes. this is medical yes i'm yes. thinking of home remedies because uh, you mean i don't no. milk milk is milk is not it has have, no it has it has no sign to show it it is the, uh, the pain of ulcer oh okay so that's that one of the beliefs yes we've mentioned before and it's good uh, people discard all those that all those uh, ideologies that have yes. no scientific uh, basis okay uh, so um 
how can one vent coming down with stomach ulcers Good. what do we do to prevent this from happening in the first place to prevent uh, coming down with ulcers mm -hmm. uh, there are certain simple and basic uh, steps that need to be put into consideration mm -hmm. uh, building on from uh, earlier uh, mentioned points mm -hmm. when we we're talking about uh, causes yes so once these causes are being avoided it reduces the risk for example uh, we mentioned infection as one of the major causes mm -hmm. Yes, it's important for people to stay in healthy environment. Absolutely. Level of hygiene has to has to be good. When people live in dirty settings, uh, it increases the chances of uh, acquiring infections. This infection of the stomach too is a possibility. Mm. So, with high sanitary standard, uh, with good hygiene the chances are reduced yes and we, we also talked about the the, the use of uh, pain relievers especially indiscriminate pain relievers uh, it's very important that people don't abuse pain relievers yes for people with uh, conditions that uh, require the administration of Uh, uh, causes of ulcer. of ulcer so when they meet a professional he gives them very important guide mm -hmm. uh, putting in mind their safety then uh, mention certain lifestyle like uh, consumption of you know, uh, this too has been proven by to be a possible cause of ulcer mm. so avoiding this life um, lifestyle can help then uh, we talked about certain medical conditions mm -hmm. it's important when in the hospital this condition uh, we know what to do what to give yes. to prevent development of ulcers so that's what to do people should improve their level their head seeking behavior mm -hmm. this way to minimize the chances the chances of developing ulcers okay well we'll take a short reason touch your dad we'll be right back back if you're just joining us this is health matters and liberty and i have my guest dr gideon chubi and we're talking on ulcer so moving on doctor what further health implications does one who doesn't properly manage his or her ulcer stand to face there are lots of implications mm. it can even cost one's life let me tell you something the back then when i was in medical school lost an auntie because she developed complication of ulcer something that could have been, been treated prevented. prevented that's the word she had ulcer and she kept going to the chemist they would give her prescriptions she would go and take after a few days or weeks she would go back they would give her some medications she would go and take she never had the chance or she didn't see the doctor not she had a chance 
She never saw a doctor. Mm. It transformed into cancer. Sorry? That's the first time so a doctor saw her. It had already moved from being a uh, normal ulcer to, to cancer. cancer. So this, this happens. This is one of the complications. It can transform from stomach ulcer to okay. stomach cancer. And you know what cancer does. Oh yes. Apart from that, uh, it can it can give rise to vomiting with blood when it is not controlled. Mm -hmm. Vomiting with blood has a lot of consequences. So when ulcer is not controlled, it can worsen to that stage. Mm. It can also uh, give rise to, we call it perforation. That is, uh, the wound in the stomach is mm -hmm. going to increase and grow so much that it's going to eat up the muscles of the stomach. I see. That's also a complication if ulcer is not well taken care of. So these are not good conditions at all to manage. It's it's way cheaper to go to hospital for checkup, see doctor when ulcer has not reached the stages. Yes, of course. It becomes more expensive to manage and it can even cost one's life once it gets to that. Yeah. So there are many complications and not good ones when ulcer is not taken care of. Okay. And cancer is one of them. Cancer is one of them. The perforation I mentioned is yes. one of them. So the vomiting with blood is one of them. And then infection spreading through the body. Yes is also one of them. You find that people become sick over and over and over so closely. All these are complications. Okay, so you did and mention, okay, frequent, sorry. Frequent loss of blood. You find that the, 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 the person is, is always in need of blood because it's losing, either through the vomiting or through some other mechanisms that come into play. All these okay. are complications yes. that come when also is not taken care of okay so you ha you did mention earlier that also can be cured yes also. okay so how is it what are the processes also can be cured when it is detected especially in the early stage mm -hmm. once the infection which is attributed to majority of the cases mm -hmm. eradicated yes then gives a higher chance of the ulcer healing when ulcer is cured thank you so much dr gideon for joining us today we hope you can join us another time on the studio thank you very much it's <laughs> nice Thank well, we've we'll come to the end of today's edition of Health Matters. Please join us same time next week. I still remain your host, Amina Amaza. Have a wonderful evening.
uh, Hajia, ni if toll gates are to be increased, not even reintroduced, and I know that I will pay uh, 100 naira in five places. You know that's 500 for me to safely drive from Abuja to 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 Kaduna. Which one will you prepare? We are weak in fighting insurgency. We are weak in fighting crime. We should still believe in our country, and we should still tell people that are not fit to be there to step down and give us our country. It is not going to be possible for you to fight your own people. This has been a hot topic. We need to change because we are not a poor state. But the government has not taken care of the us. Where are these people fighting? Day, you wake up to a fresh hot breakfast. That's when we bring you the stories. Tighter financial conditions, reduced trade and investment, as well as substantial decline in commodity prices. We give you the numbers. Factual and analytical. Supply will, will sorry, demand will exceed supply and inflation will go up and so on. Whether it's downgrading of Nigeria's rating by Moody's and Fitch rating agencies. Sizzling hot and fresh. Join us. I am Umar Kaltungu. I am Aisha Muhammad Ahmed. It's Business Today, weekdays at 7 a.m. Only on Liberty TV, Voice for All. Recent growth in local consumption of liquefied petroleum gas LPG, also known as cooking gas, which is rated at about 840,000 metric tons in Nigeria. In Kaduna State, about 1,000 to 1,300 tons yearly has been inched on many Nigerians converting to the use of cooking gas for domestic and commercial uses. However, the use of cooking gas has been gradually addressed of gas as clean fuel has increased over the years, yielding to the high conversion of household. Are you using gas? Yes, we do. Why? Um, it's cheaper and it's faster and it's more affordable generally. I believe that gas is um, more affordable to use than kerosene and any other means of um, cooking. But it's just a little unsafe in the sense that it's highly explosive. But I advise that people should use it and they should just ensure that while using it, they, are, they use it safely and they avoid accidents as much as possible. Yes, I use gas. Why? Um, because it's one of the fastest means to cook and it's very easy to use compared to the uh, stove, which is kerosene and electric. I always take it um, easily in my house because it's very rich for this weather. Okay, you don't keep it in my son. You don't. Anything cylinder. Don't put it in the sun. Then you should cover it. I put it somewhere that's very cold. Then I use something to cover the head. 
yes i use gas because it is gas is actually more faster than other means of preparing food yeah gas is more preferable when it comes to cooking gas is actually very very preferable i like i prefer it to using the stove it's not just preferable it is cheaper compared to kerosene and other means of preparing food that's what i think that's amazing I want to, I'd like to have it in addition to other sources of uh, energy in the house. So I use it in the house. And I think and the stress like everything is just faster some nigerians who are against the use of lpg says it is because of its properties which makes it dangerous to handle and as such could be hazardous if not properly handled no i don't use gas because of the risk involved why because i've seen so many accidents of gas the moment it starts leaking from the pipe if there is any fire contact, it will explode. I have seen so many gas victims, gas accidents. That's why I don't use gas. I prefer to use, I have electric gas. I use electric gas, but I don't use gas cylinder because of the risks involved. No, because it's dangerous. It used to cause loss of lives and properties. Like the one that happened at Sabo. As children that they used to play, so they would go and play with it. Then by then, accident would happen. Seriously, we don't used to use that because you know everybody have to be safety in his in his house because you know gas is something that is very toxic or is very explosive, and some people they cannot use gas because you know some are not educated. You understand? So if you say please use this, they can use it they can misplace or they can just use it anyhow and you know gas can easily explode anyhow and it can kill you know it kills more than petroleum more than anything so that's my opinion on that in fact i don't use gas i'm scared of using the gas because i have uh, younger children grandchildren uh, they could be careless and that will cause me a destruction I don't use it in totality, but I use petroleum because I use petroleum for my grinding machine and also for my riding machine. No, I'm using kerosene and gogoil because of the wahala. No, but I'm hearing it from somewhere else.